Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this petite pastel snowman ornament. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. For the petite pastel snowman ornament, we'll start with the pattern. This is just graph paper. It's four and a half tall and two and a half wide. I use my circle ruler. Let's see. Here's the two and a half inch circle and I use that to round the bottom. And then of course I kind of folded it in half and you can see I drew this little line. I wanna come down straight for just a quarter of an inch and then sort of round this out in a soft curve here, not bramp, bramp, like that, but just kind of a gentle curve here and then connect to the circle. It's not hard, you can do it. Now from this, I'm going to cut out um, this pattern from midway fusible pellon, which I've already done. I will fuse this to uh, one side, it doesn't really matter, of this wool felt. This is available at Joanne Fabric. I'm gonna fuse this and cut it out. Here's how it looks, the front and the back. Now I'm going to embroider the face and it's important to remember that the face is just very tight in the center of this area. I like to draw a line here and then fold it in half lengthwise just to determine the center here and draw a line there. Now, if I fold this part and draw a line across the center of this face, this headpiece, I don't want any of my features to be above the center. I'll just make it a little bit darker because maybe you can't quite see it. So none of my features are going to be above this line. Then I do little placement marks for the features. This is, I'm not drawing the eye, I'm just doing a placement mark for the eye. I'm <laughs> trying to make it extra dark for you. Okay, and then a little nose, a little carrot nose right there in the middle, right along that middle. And then I need to leave at least a quarter of an inch here for the neck, right? So I can do a smile or a little, little heart there. I'll do a smile like that and we will embroider the face. I'm using two strands of floss, black for the eyes, orange for the nose, and red for the mouth. So I'll start with the eyes. Here is my two strands of black. You know, the last time I did a project on this cutting mat, I realized that it just makes a lot of noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to this. It's handy to show you the inches and the marks for the size of something, but we don't really need it. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Oh, I think I'm gonna make these little triangle eyes. There's a lot of different ways to embroider a face, and I've even done different faces for different snowman projects that I have presented to you. So you can review, review those if you like. Even that is fine for an eye. Just a little slanted line, that's cute. Should I leave it? Yeah, maybe I'll leave it. I'll do a, um, a second stitch right along beside it just so that it looks a little bit heavier and it reads as an eye. Let's see. There, that looks good. Now I'm gonna tie it off in the back. I don't wanna carry my thread across because that can form a shadow, I don't want that. So I'll just tie this off and I'm gonna to try to keep the, the knot or the, you know, right in the line of the stitch that's already there. A little bit later, I'm gonna add a tiny smudge of glue there so I'm not too concerned about leaving the thread exposed. It's always tricky to have the second eye match the first and I do try to get them to match. So the angle of the stitch or whatever you decide, but it's sometimes it can be tricky. So I'm just doing two stitches at a slant. I was gonna make a triangle, but I just decided to keep it super simple. There we go, so those are the eyes, just two stitches. 
two there, two there. And now I'll secure this thread in the back. I have two strands of orange floss for the nose. This is DMC 608 if you want to match the exact floss. So the, the nose will be a carrot and I'm just gonna do horizontal stitches tapering down from here down to here. You can start up higher or lower. You can start wider or narrower. It's gonna turn out just great. Okay, one. I'm just gonna count how many stitches I do. Don't pull them too tight. I find more success just doing them individually. So poke up, poke down, poke up, poke down. Also, the, the stitches don't all have to touch. They can be a little bit more random, you know, meh, 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 meh. Um, it just looks a little bit more primitive that way. And I'm going to go down to about here. So now I'm gonna taper smaller and smaller. I'll do maybe three more. There we go. You can see they're a little haphazard. I always deliberately do maybe like the third stitch a little bit wider. I don't know why. So I'm gonna secure this one on the back. I think I'll just do a fly stitch for the mouth. I'm gonna start out about right here, I could have gone higher. Should I go higher? Let's see, how is this going to look? Well, I think it'll be okay. So I come out here and then I'm gonna go back in here, sort of even with the edges of the eyes. I can tell right now, I think I wish I went higher, but I'll try it. Oh, that's cute, what do you think? Might be a little bit low, but I think it'll work. Okay, so then I'm going to secure that fly stitch with just, you know, at the bottom like that, boop. And it's okay if, you know, you catch it over here, over here. It just makes a slightly different expression and you can get some very whimsical looks that way. So again, I'll secure my thread. That looks good. Now, you know, I told you I was going to smudge the back of this with a little bit of glue so I just touched the back here, the little knots, with the top of my glue gun without even squeezing anything out. That looks great. Now, one thing that adds a lot of personality to the face is blushing the cheeks, but I always save that for the end. The next step is to add this fabric. I'm choosing this print. It has like kind of like little star snowflakes on it. And what I want is for the seam to be right here. So I'm gonna place it about a quarter inch below this so that when I stitch and fold it back, it'll hopefully be close to the edge there. Here's how it looks. I stitched across and then I'm just gonna fold it back. I'm going to pin this and sort of baste right around the edge and then trim away the fabric. And now I'll add some vintage trims. This is sort of a flat fillet lace, about five eighths of an inch wide. I'm just gonna leave this raw edge at the top and then I'll center it and stitch it down. And then I'm going to add this blue to either side so that this coordinates with my angel project. So I'll add this to either side and I'll be right back. I sewed this ivory lace on with a little zigzag stitch. I think you can see it there. And I switched to blue thread on my machine and now I will stitch these down the sides. There we go, that looks good. Don't be concerned about the raw edges of the lace because we're gonna tie a little scarf around there. And I'm also going to add some buttons, but I like to wait until the end so that I get the placement just right. I'm going to place this face down on this wool felt and 
then stitch all the way around, leaving an opening at the top for turning. I sewed pretty close to the edge there. You don't have to be that close. And I'm just going to clip into these inner corners here and then trim and turn through this opening. I backstitched here and here. This is a little bit vulnerable because you're turning and stuffing through this, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna clip into here, trim and turn. That looks good. It's got a nice shape. It comes in right here like it's supposed to, nice and smooth. It's not perfect. And also, as I was turning through here, I was reminded um, if I had sewn those buttons on, sometimes when you're working it through as you're turning it, they can kind of come loose. So that's another reason to wait to add the buttons. So I'm going to stuff this with nice, good quality polyfill. Polyfill Ultra Plush. I'm going to fill this all the way to the top. There we go. That looks good. This shape is nice and smooth and round. And now I'm going to gather up this top. I have a doubled strand of this Coats and Clark hand quilting thread. And I use a thimble and I'm just going to secure the knot here in the seam allowance inside here, right in here. And then just gather up with a running stitch I'm keeping this finger inside to prevent the stuffing from getting caught in my stitches. So I can feel right there. When I reach a seam, I wanna go over the seam like that so that the seam doesn't pop out. It's a valley, not a mountain. There and back to the other side. I'm just gonna push that stuffing in and gently tug it. I'm going to try to get those seam allowances inside like that, but there is a hat that goes on and so it's not super critical. And now I'll just go through it around a few more times and tighten it up to secure. That looks good. And now I'm going to just end my thread with a little French knot here and just pop it through. I'm going to add the scarf. This is just a piece of lace. It's about half a yard, but, but that's plenty. And this was from Timu. So I tied the scarf on first so that I can kind of gauge where the buttons should go. I'm using these little vintage mother of pearl buttons. They have really small holes, so I have threaded this little fine needle. It's been used so much that it's bent, but you can see how fine it is, and I know that it'll go through the holes. You don't have to use such tiny buttons, but I thought it would be fun. So I think about there would be the right spot for the first button. And I'm going to secure my thread in the back and come out here, that looks good. There we go, that popped through, that um, not popped through. And then I'll sew on the button, just making an X. I like using this blue thread because it just adds another little touch of blue I want my projects to be mostly just neutrals with a hint of pastel and not, you know, overwhelmingly blue. And I just really like this sweet little touch of blue in the thread. All right, so now I'm gonna skip down to do the second one. I might have secured the thread after the first button, but I know that this is a double strand of thread and I think it'll be fine just to carry over the next one. 
I did two stitches in each direction. So two this way and two that way. You might think I'm carefully lining them up, but I'm really not. It's okay if they're a little off. The buttons look good and the scarf looks good. So I'm gonna add a touch of hot glue here to secure this. Just a little bit. That looks good. Okay, now for the hat. From the hem of my sweater, and this was my sweater out of my closet. I am sorry to say that I must have had some moths in there. Um, okay, so five inches across and five inches tall, I'm going to cut a triangle, just like that. I just sort of folded it and eyeballed it, and it turns out that it is exactly five inches tall, but only four inches if you don't stretch it but I think it's going to be fine. So I'll fold this right side together. It's a little tricky. Let me see if I get this right. Okay. All right. So I'm folding up the edge and you know, your sweater might not be exactly like mine. You might be using the cuff or just a straight edge or whatever, but this is just one way to do it. And of course you could also, um, you know, add some trim to your hat, whatever you like, but I'm going to, I folded up the cuff and that's going to be on the right side. So it's on the inside right now. And then I'm going to pin and stitch along here. There we go. Now I'm going to turn this to the right side and try it on my snowman. Okay. I like that. Now I'm going to add some stuffing in here. So you can see here's my, um, Here's my little cuff and I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing in here and I'm also going to pull this point out and, and I'm going to sew a pom-pom to the top of the point. I did not trim any of the seam allowance um, because I need something to sew through when I'm sewing on the pom-pom. I don't want the knot to pull through the weave of the cashmere. So I'm going to sew the pom-pom onto the tip of the hat. This is a vintage pom-pom. It has that little metal wire in the middle, which I just think is so charming. Of course, I've had these forever. This is, this is a nice vintage ivory color. It can be challenging to get your needle straight up through the hat without catching on the fabric. So I usually just start on the outside here and then kind of pull that knot in and then i'm going to sew this trying to hide that wire but it's nice to know that you can just go in between you know through the loop of the wire and you know that that pom-pom is going to be secure okay that's going to be cute all right so i'll go through a couple of times That's good. And then I'll knot off my thread, try to hide it in the yarn of the pom-pom. Now, before I put the hat on, I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing. It just adds a little bit of height to the hat and it might look kind of funny, but what I want is just, um, I want it to kind of look like that the head of the snowman is a little bit taller than it actually is. I'm gonna pull that around the face. I like to pin it just to make sure that the hat comes down as far as I want it to. I like this little cuff here, that's a nice detail. I wanna be sure that I can see the face. And then since I have the scarf tied here on this side, I'm gonna pull this down on this side. I wanna make sure I just like the way that looks, and I do. So first I'm going to hand stitch around the edge of the hat, around the brim here. 
I'm going to start tacking this down in the back, right at the base of the of the of the hat, and I like it to go all the way down, covering the whole head. I'm using just a single strand of regular sewing thread. There's not going to be a lot of resistance against this like there would be if you were stuffing something. So I'm not really concerned about the strength of my stitches. I have that hat basted all the way around the bottom edge. And now I'm just gonna add a few stitches at the top of the cuff because that is loose there. Although since it has so much elastic in it, I don't think it's gonna come I don't think it's going to become a problem. And of course, when I'm traveling, I go underneath so that big long stitch right there won't show. I'm going to go just a little bit further until I get to the side where I want to secure the pom pom. All right, so then I'll bend this down. Oh, that looks so cute. And secure this. I'm using the same thread right here. And I will secure this now. I'm going to stitch, I can dig down through the actual snowman's head and then to this edge of the hat here. Let's see, maybe the front edge too, just to make sure that it stays down. Maybe a little bit lower down here. <laughs> okay, down here closer to the pom-pom, but I do want the pom-pom to be loose. I don't want it to be, you know, straight down against the neck like that. I want it to be loose, but I don't want it to come apart either. I think one or two more stitches will do it just to secure that hat. Now, since I stitched all the way around here and here and here with the same strand of thread, I need to be really careful with my tension and not to pull anything too tightly. I will add one or two more stitches and then I'll secure my thread. Okay, for the hanging loop, I'm going to use this gold and white baker's twine. I'm going down and I'm making sure I go through the snowman, not just through the hat. And let's just test it to make sure that's gonna hang in the center. Very good. And then I tie the ends into an overhand knot and trim. And now for the fun. Let's add the cheeks. I'm just using this, you know, cosmetic blush. It's very bright. And I'll just add it like this. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, so cute. Always add a little extra because it tends to rub off. Now, you could always add a little embellishment right here, like a little snowflake sticker or a vintage flower or another button, a jingle bell, whatever you like, but I'm going to say this one is done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.